Guys, I just made a video real quick on um, what I went through when I had my heart attack back almost three years ago. And the only reason why I went through it and said anything about it was because I feel everybody should have an idea as to the, the symptoms. Because everybody may have different symptoms. And, you know, and it may be a heart attack and it may not be. So you have to kind of pay attention. In my case, it was played off as acid reflux. Now, I'm going to try to make it quick. I started it before, and I ended up going into 25 minutes, and I am not going to bore you guys for 25 minutes any more than I have to. So I'm going to try to make it short. This went on for almost five weeks. Prior to this, a few months prior, I had already been to the heart doctor, you know, for my uh, my checkup. You know, once I hit mid fifties, I started seeing a heart doctor every year, just like I'd see a normal doctor every year. You know, it's just something to do. You know, the insurance company pays for it, might as well do it, right? And there's never never had a heart issue, but you do it anyway, okay? So um, I had a monitor on me. One year he would do a stress test. The following year monitor one year next year stress test this was the year for the monitor so prior to the this heart attack a few months i had a monitor on me and everything checked out okay so i had no problems so anyway i'm cutting the lawn one day and there's a little piece of lawn out here that we have to cut by hand when i say hand it's a gas operated lawnmower you got to push it most of the time use a tractor if you can see that little piece of lawn out there it's about 15 by 15 and right over there next to that holly bush, underneath that little red lamp, if you can see it. Oh, you can't see it right now, but it, right next to that holly bush right there, there's a little red lamp hanging up here someplace. And there used to be a stump right there that you can sit on. So the wife was doing a little trimming of the plants, and I decided I'm just going to mow that little piece there, because it was right about like this time of year, and it was like the last cutting. So let me cut it before I put everything away. So that's what I did. And as I'm cutting it and walking back up towards that plant where the stump is, all of a sudden I'm starting to get the sweats, uh, pain in the chest, um, you know, uh, kind of weak in the knees, a little lightheaded, all right? So when I got up to there, I shut the power more off and I sat down on that stump, putting my elbows to my knees and kind of just relaxing a bit. Wife comes over and says, you okay? And I says, I think so. And she says, what's the matter? I said, I got a little bit of pain in the chest, and a little dizzy. I says, she goes, well, you know, I'm, I'm getting nervous. I said, well, you know, let's see what happens. I think it's acid reflux, which I did. And the other thing is I didn't really want to get her upset as well for something that maybe there was no reason for. So I sat there for a few minutes, did some shallow breathing, slow and trying to maintain a little composure here and, and you know, work the, the pain. So I was able to control the pain a little bit with some shallow breathing and slow breathing. And like I say, knees and elbows, you know, I was resting my elbows on my knees while I sat there. And uh, the pain started to go away a little bit. To a point to where I said, you know what, babe, I'm gonna call it a day, let's go in the house and relax. You know, it's about three o'clock, 3.30 in the afternoon. So I start walking to the house, and luckily enough, we have the kennel. So it's about 30, 35 feet to the house, and there's a kennel. Well, you've seen it on the other side there, a fence. So luckily that fence was there because I had to hold on to the fence for a minute because the dizziness and the pain started coming back. So the wife helped me into the house. The rest of the way, I get into the living room. I had an opened button-down shirt on. Uh, I sit on the couch. My wife takes off my shirt, and I tell her, I need wet towels. I says, I need three of them. Wet, cold, wet towels, quick. So she throws a wet towel on my back after my shirt was off. She throws another one on my neck, and I grab one and put it over my head so I can wipe my forehead with it and things. I'm trying to stop the sweat because, I mean, I'm just dropping sweat on the floor, you know, like almost as if the towels were dripping on the floor. I mean, I was dropping sweat. And, uh, and I'm controlling my breathing and such. And now naturally she's getting nervous and I'm somewhat concerned, but I've, as a, I have acid reflux, but I always control that with diet. So there was really no reason for it to 
rear up like it did. Uh, and I've never had it as bad as what I was having then, if in fact that's what it was. So anyway, I kind of just sat there for a while. Pain goes away. Sweats break. You know, they go fine and everything. So you know, I'm just going to lay here on the couch and relax. So we turned on TV. I laid on the couch. And I just laid there and relaxed. And, you know, and everything was fine. The pain went away. Everything was okay. Had no problems. The FedEx truck is pulling up. So they think they're going to get a cookie. The FedEx truck and the UPS driver, when they deliver here, they give them uh, doggy biscuits. <laughs> so anyway, um, the next morning, the pain went away. Next morning, I get up. Wife's getting ready to go to work. How you feeling? I said, I feel okay. But I'm still laying down, and I'm still on the couch. So uh, you know, she, gets, she leaves for work. I get up, and I'm going to go out and make a cup of coffee, uh, you know, a pot of coffee, and, and have a cup, and you know, continue my day. Everything seems to be okay. I get up, I'm walking into the kitchen, and the pain starts coming back. Oh, shit. Right? Now, here's another thing. When I said coffee, I only drink between six and eight ounces of coffee a day. I don't drink a lot of coffee. One cup in the morning, and that's it. Okay? As a matter of fact, there's one of the cups over there, and most of the time, that's half full of a 1% uh, milk or something. So, I mean, it's not a full cup of coffee and I don't drink and I don't smoke and I back then I maintained my diet you know because like I say acid reflux so anyway I call my doctor and say doc I'm in a lot of pain here I explained to him basically what was going on and I said you know it's got you know at this point you know if it's acid reflux you know can you call one of the gastro guys so I can get in there today to see him and get some of this pain he goes, listen, the pain that you're describing that you're in, it sounds serious. And it's an emergency. You better get your ass to the emergency room. Oh, so what do I do? I shuffle on out to the truck, shuffle on my feet, my slippers, <laughs> uh, button-down shirt that's open, and a wet towel around my neck. And uh, I drive to uh, uh, an emergency room. It's a small hospital. Uh, it belongs to Yale, New Haven. It's part of Yale. And uh, I drive to it, and I go in, and, you know, they see me wearing a wet rag and sweating, and they uh, take me in the back. They do an EKG. And the EKG is showing good at this point, you know, which I'll tell you about the EKGs another time. Uh, and they shoot some crap in my arm because, you know, it is on record that I uh, have a history of acid reflux, even though I haven't had an attack in 15 years. You know, so they said, well, lay here for a while, you know, and uh, we'll, you know, check in with you. They put the TV on. So I'm just laying there in the bed, elevated, watching TV, relaxing. And when you do this, naturally the pain goes away. Doctor comes in and says, uh, how you feeling? I said, oh, I feel pretty decent. I said, the pain went away. I said, no. Oh. He goes, well, I'll tell you what. He says, uh, we did some blood work on you. He says, and I think you may have a slight case of angina. I said, angina. Well, you know what? I'm kind of ignorant to the fact of, the, of angina because, again, I've never had a problem with issues with hearts or anything before. So I'm thinking, well, Jesus, it must be some type of acid reflux. You know, I'm feeling better. He shot some shit in my arm for acid reflux. So, you know, maybe that's the case. And he says, you know... But, um, you know, go home, relax, and make an appointment with your heart doctor. Right? Oh, okay. So I go home, thinking, well, if it's, an if it's that bad, or, you know, if it's serious, he's not going to send me home with it. So it's got to be acid reflux. So I make an appointment with my heart doctor a few days, you know, later. I go see him, and uh, he tells me after he does an EKG again, you know, and he listens and breathes deep and all that. He says, you know, he says, it sounds like acid reflux to me. I said, but Doc, I says, I haven't changed anything in my diet. You know, I haven't had a acid reflux problem in 15 years, you know. No, it sounds like acid reflux. He says, you know, just watch what you eat. You know, here's a prescription for, you know, Nexium or whatever, the purple pill. And, you know, he says, I'll see you next week. All right. Well, you know what? It's not working. As long as I'm laying on the couch, I'm fine. As soon as I get up to do anything, the more I do, the steeper the pain gets, the dizziness, the weakness, the sweats, you know. So, you know, getting up to go to the bathroom or to get a drink of water was about it. 
So a week later, I go see the heart doctor again. I drive there, and uh, you know, he says, "Doc, I said, I'm still having these problems. I need another EKG, you know, and uh, breathe deep, you know, and all that kind of crap." And he says, "No, I'm still going to say it's acid reflux, you know." He said, uh, "You know, we'll set up an appointment for you to go see a gastro." So you can take care of that and uh, let the machine get that. I guess so many telemarketing calls is ridiculous. I don't even answer the phone anymore. Um, so uh, he sets up an appointment for me to see a gastro guy uh, about three weeks away. So, all right, you know. So I called up one of my guys that I know, a gastro guy, uh, but I didn't call him in. I'm jumping ahead. So a week later, I go see the heart doctor again. So this is three weeks, three times with him, one time with the emergency room. I said, Doc, I'm still having these pains. You know, I, I, I don't think it's acid reflux, and if it is, you know, I can't wait two or three weeks. I mean, you've got to be able to get me into this guy earlier. Checks my heart, you know, with the uh, machine again, EKG, checks the blood pressure, checks the, you know, <sighs> breathe deep. Uh, I'm still saying it's acid reflux, he says. Well, four times now, the week later, I'm back again. I bring my wife with me. And we're telling him the story again, thinking he's not hearing this. Maybe the wife explains it to him. You know, there's something, you know, if it's acid reflux, why am I waiting so long? You know, my GP could have got me in almost the same day. You know, I mean, so apparently this guy doesn't realize the pain I'm in or... He doesn't really concern with heart problems, so he doesn't care. So the fourth time I see him, he tells me, acid reflux. All right. So I finally get my gastro guy to see me on a Friday, that Friday. After I got tired of listening to my heart doctor, I finally got my gastro guy, because I'm not going to wait another couple weeks to see his. My gastro guy said, come in and see me. It was like a day and a half, two days I was there, you know. Because um, I called him in the afternoon. I was there the second day after. So uh, I see him on a Friday. He tells me, I don't think it's acid reflux. He says, you know, the pain that you're describing uh, doesn't seem like acid reflux. He says, plus, you know, I'm still walking around with wet towels on me with open shirts. He says, uh, you know, an acid reflux, yes, can't bring on the sweats. You know, he says, and sometimes it can't bring on a little weakness to the knees because of the pain itself. He says, but it doesn't sound... He says, if anything, maybe a broken rib or something, he says, I would think, you know, near the front part of the cage. He says, I don't know. He goes, well, so I'm going to go down on Tuesday and look. He says, meanwhile, take this medication <laughs> and see if it helps. Tuesday, I'm going to go down. He says, I'm calling your doctor, your heart doctor, to make an appointment for you to have a stress test on Monday. Now, this was Friday. So he calls my heart doctor and says, I hear him on the phone. This man needs to see you and take a stress test on Monday because I'm going down Tuesday. This man is in pain, blah, 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 blah. Now, this is something my heart doctor should have done with his gastro guys the first day, you know. But anyway, I go to the office in Guilford, which I always go to. I walk up the stairs because it's acid reflux. I'm going to work this off. Why take an elevator? I get into the office. I tell the receptionist, uh, this is on a Monday at 1 o'clock, that I'm there to take a stress test. She looks it up and she says, yes, but you're in the wrong office. Uh, you're supposed to be in New Haven. I says, time out. I never go to the New Haven office since I've been here, and it's like seven years at the time. I says, I've always come to this office. It's on my card to come to this office. This is the office I'm at. Well, I can't help you. Your doctor is in New Haven. Uh, and he's the head of all the other doctors in that building. It's his business, his office. And he has like five, six, seven, eight, I don't know how many associates he's got under him. So um, I said, well, listen. And then I got a little pissed. I said, listen, I don't care if it's a heart, if it's acid reflux, or if it's a fucking hair across my ass. And that's just what I said, and I excuse part for the language. All right. I said, somebody in this fucking medical facility has to have something for this pain. 
Now, meanwhile, everybody in the waiting room is hearing me go through this. So, you know, they're, they're looking at me like, oh, shit, you know, we got a, we got a nutcase here. <laughs> you know, meanwhile, she says, oh, you're in pain now? You know, and by that time, I just wanted to whack her. I wanted her to know how pain felt, but I was in too much pain to do it. <laughs> so she goes and gets one of my doctor's associates, if that's what you want to call him, uh, good guy, though. Right? This guy had some common sense to him. He looks through the glass at me, and he looks at me, sees me, and he calls me into the back. So I, him, I walk around back, he takes me into an exam room, sets me down on the table with a couple nurses. He takes a little pill, puts it under my tongue, and says, listen, you may get a headache or you may feel a little sizzle under your tongue, but don't worry about it. Uh, and while he's telling me that, the nurse is crushing up an aspirin and putting that in my face. So I've got a broken up aspirin in my mouth, and I got this little bitty pill under my tongue, which later I found out it was nitrostat, so nitroglycerin. Um, and I carry them now all the time. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Four milligrams. Uh, they're a little white pill. Anyway, within two minutes... The pain went away. The sweats, everything. Boom. I was a new man. I go, holy shit, Doc. I said, give me a script for that stuff. I says, and thank you, and uh, have a good day, and I'm going to go home and relax now. I felt great. He goes, no, you're not. He goes, you're going to the emergency room. You, know, you got to get into the hospital. I go, what are you talking about, Doc? He says, you're having a heart attack. Uh-huh. He says, an ambulance is on their way. He says, is your truck locked up? And I said, yeah, well, my truck's always locked. I says, and, you know, the wife knows where I'm at, so she'll know what has to be done, you know, as far as getting the truck picked up. Um, so it's not an issue. You know, so they throw me in an ambulance and take me to Yellow New Haven. Uh, my wife meets me there uh, because they called her for me, which was great. Um, and uh, they went, you know, they did a, uh, what do you call it there? They stick the, um, the camera thing, you know, up through your groin and up into the heart so they can check it. And um, come to find out, I had a 100% blockage on a main artery in my heart. And if I had done anything other than shuffle my feet, I would have been dead. If I had taken that stress test, I probably would have died, they told me. So it was just one of those things. Somebody up above was looking out and made sure that everything worked the way it did, including me swearing at the receptionist uh, to get me where I was, uh, which was to get fixed. Um, they put the stent in. As soon as they put the stent in, bam, the pain went away. The elephant got off my chest. I'm breathing again. The legs are back. The sweats are gone. Uh, it was just like, bam. It, it's like, it never happened. It was like, wow. You know, it was just, it was, you know, you won't believe it. You know, <laughs> you just couldn't believe it unless you've done it. So, um, but anyway, after that, naturally, I changed doctors because uh, my doctor put me through four, almost five weeks of bullshit and could have killed me uh, in the interim. So uh, I changed doctors, and I've got a, a doctor now, that, uh, which is part of Yale, uh, and Yale is a decent hospital. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, a teaching hospital, uh, so there's always a lot of students running around, you know, and, and things. Uh, so they're, they're always making sure you're comfortable. You know, they're always coming in. So much sometimes the coming in and out of the room that it's annoying, <laughs> you know. But, uh, you know, they're students. They're willing to learn. And then the doctors, because, you know, not only are they doctors, but they're also teachers. Uh, so, you know, when they come into the room to talk to you, they have four or five others with them, you know, students and doctors. And they'll say, you know, these are students. And would you mind if they sat here and ask you a few questions? And you don't mind, because the more they ask you, the more chances of them finding out, and the doctor hearing it as well, you know, uh, to find out what, what the problem may be, you know, so uh, it works out well. So anyway, make a long story short, it wasn't acid reflux, I had a heart attack. So guys, in my case, it was pains in the chest, sweating, weakness, you know, a little dizziness, um, you know, and, and, you know, that's all there is to it. Now, there's also, my doctor was telling me, sometimes you get it in the left side, like the neck, the 
the ear, down the neck, down the shoulder, the little muscle behind the shoulder or in front of the shoulder. You know, she's telling me certain things to look for as well, uh, just in case, all right? But uh, I did a stress test a couple days back, and it came back A-OK. -okay. No damage to the heart other than I got the stent. So luckily, it was OK for there. And the other thing is, the only thing that actually kept me alive uh, or anybody in this case that goes through what I went through, is that the heart is actually a, a, a wonderful thing. Uh, besides keeping you alive, it wants to stay alive itself. Um, in my case, it blocked off 100% on the main artery. But it started, because I wasn't doing anything strenuous all the time, you know, it didn't kill me, it allowed the heart to do what it wants to do, which is it makes new vessels. It, it forms smaller vessels off of the main vessel just before the blockage just to give the heart a way of you know getting the blood to it. So it starts to build uh, and form its own little vessels to bypass the blockage. Now if it hadn't done that, I would have been dead instantly. And because they were small vessels, that was the reason why I was able to naturally live and shuffle my feet a little bit and not do any work. Because even though the main artery was 100% blocked, the little vessels were allowing just enough through, you know, to keep me alive. And uh, it's not just my heart. Any heart will do that. So, um, but you can't count on that, one. Two, it's not going to give you enough. So you can't say, well, if I live through this, I can just take it easy and it'll build new vessels for me around the old blockage and I'll be okay again. No, you won't because it'll never put you at 100%, you know. And if you start thinking that, you're going to be a dead man or a dead person. So, but anyway, guys, if you get any symptoms at all, don't take it as just being one thing or the other. Think about it. And there's ways to find out, because actually by me going through this, I've learned a few things. One is, these nitro stats that I carry, right here, let me get in the light. Nitro stat, four milligrams, they're little white pills. I carry these, been carrying them now for almost three years. You've got to renew them all the time, because they go bad on you quick. They're only good for maybe a month or two. And if you open the bottle, they'll go quick faster than that. Um, I really never had to take any of these, luckily, thank God. Um, but if you do have to, if you do take one, for instance, if you went to the doctor, heart doctor, or any doctor, and you're having a problem with chest pains and dizziness and shoulder pain or whatever the case may be, and you think it may be a heart, you know, first of all, you are you. You know, you have a kind of a say as to what goes on here, you know. So, you know, if I had known this earlier, I would have said it to him. Doc, give me a... These are four milligrams, all right? But they'll know automatically to give you a light one. Give me a nitrostat, a nitroglycerin pill. Because I've got to tell you what, if you're not having a heart attack, it doesn't bother you. All it's going to do if you're not having a heart attack is maybe give you a slight, and I mean slight, headache for a minute or two. That's it. And if you are having a heart attack, it's going to show because you're going to feel much, much better real quick. And you still may get a headache for a minute or two, all right? But the thing is, where I'm getting here is, it, it doesn't hurt you for them to give you one to try it, to see, okay? Now, they may not, if they really don't believe it, that, you know, it's a heart. So, you know, it's up to you and them, but that's something there. And there's another thing they can do, I found out. Because you become real uh, educated real quick when you've gone through what I went through as others you could they have something that they call the magic potion now i don't know if they all call it the same thing or not but what it is it's like a lattecane it's like a numbing agent and they add it to like a malox or a pepto-bismol or, or something like that something that's going to coat your throat and your uh, whatever you want to call that thing i suck for words um especially since i had the heart attack believe it or not i gotta blame it on something um, but uh, what it does is it coats your throat and all so that if there is acid reflux, you know, and you've got something there, a sore of some sort, and the acid coming up is bothering it and you have acid reflux, 
this potion, this laticane that they add to this this uh, Maalox or whatever, um, they only give you like a shot of it. They're not getting a lot of it in the shot glass. It coats, and when it coats, it numbs. And if it's acid reflux, it's going to numb it, and the acid reflux is going to go away. So there's two ways to determine if it's acid reflux or heart attack. Nitroglycerin or the magic potion. So these are two things that you only can mention if something like that ever comes up, you know, and you're not sure. But when everything starts rolling together, when it's sweating, dizziness, weak in the legs, pain, all right, you know, you, you better get yourself to a doctor quick, uh, an emergency room quick, and let them decide. And these are things you can mention to them if, in fact, you feel necessary. So, because both of those that I mentioned to you are not going to hurt you, regardless if you have a heart attack or acid reflux or not. All right, so. All right, guys. 25 minutes, 26 minutes. I didn't mean to keep it that long, but health is important to everybody, and everybody has different symptoms. So that's the only reason why I'm doing this, to let you know my story and how it went on for almost five weeks, even with a professional, well-known heart doctor, which I have now changed out. <laughs> Catch you later.